Good morning, ma'am. Isaac Peruch. All right. We'll get him. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. While we're waiting for him, can you spell his last name for the court reporter for me? Yes. Uh, B A R U C H. Thank you. Swear or affirm to testify truthfully in this case on the penalty of law. Hey, there's a thing here, transcript. You thing. can just Go keep ahead. it there, sir. Have a seat. Okay. Put the microphone uh, close to you, please. Thank you. Good morning. Morning. Would you state your name for the record, please? Uh, my name is Isaac Baruch. I S A A C B A R U C H. Mr. Baruch, where do you currently live? I live in Los Angeles. Do you know the plaintiff in this case, Johnny Depp? Yes. How do you know Mr. Depp? I know him from since teenagers. Uh, we met in Florida. And could you tell the jury a little bit about your experience meeting Mr. Depp when you were teenagers in Florida? Yeah, uh, we were both playing in bands. We had mutual friends and uh, that we met in probably 1980. And uh, yeah, we hit it off, we got along with each other. And uh, yeah. That's How often did you see Mr. Depp when you were teenagers together in Florida? A few times, uh, a few times uh, a month, I'd say it could be more, a little more or whatever, because, you know, we'd see each other at parties and clubs, nightclubs where the bands played. Yeah, like that. And for how long were you both um, living in Florida and seeing each other somewhat regularly? Well, we, we met in like 1980, so... Uh, and then we both moved away. He moved to California. I moved to New York. What was that? 80, from 80 to 83. Was that like four years? What were your impressions of Mr. Depp while you were um, both living in Florida at the same time? Oh, he's, he's a sweet kid. He's, he's a objection. sweet guy. Sir, sir, wait, there's an objection. Oh. Thank you. What his impressions were back then? Or what's the relevance? Just establishing the background and the right. relationship, Your Honor. I'll sustain the objection. Next question, please. All right. Um, Mr. Bruch, did there come a time when Mr. Depp uh, moved away from Florida? Yeah, yeah. And where did he move to, if you know? Like I said before, he moved to California. At some point in time, did you also move to California? Yeah. And did you um, reconnect with Mr. Depp when you got there? Yeah. Around what time was that? Pro sometime during the first year and... Uh, then afterwards, after the first year of more and stuff, yeah. About what year would you say that was? Oh, I moved to California in uh, September of uh, 85. And did you know um, if Mr. Depp was working when you arrived in California in, in 1985? Well, I knew, I knew he was pursuing acting at that time. Yeah, I, 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 he's looking for work because he's pursuing acting. I, How often did you see uh, Mr. Depp when you first moved to California? Well, like I said, the first year 
a few times. Afterwards, I had a friend who uh, whose girlfriend uh, lived in the same building as Johnny, and that so then hanging out over there, I ended up seeing Johnny more often. And plus, my friend who I who I'm talking about, who whose girlfriend lived in the same building, he was playing in a band and they needed another guitar player and Johnny ended up joining the band so we were hanging out a lot more often. Um, what were you doing when you moved out to California? I was pursuing music also, working retail jobs and trying to get a band, make a band, you know. Did there come a time when you began working for Mr. Depp? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When was that? Oh, that's later on. That's like in 1993. What were you doing for Mr. Depp when you started working for him in 1993? Well, he owned a place called the Viper Room, and uh, which is a music venue, a nightclub, bar, and bands play. And uh, it was already open for six months. And uh, the girl who was working the... Uh, the person who was working the as office manager didn't want to work there anymore. So the guy who was running the place for Johnny, who was a, a friend named Sal Jenko, another Florida friend from back in 1980, when we all first meet, he calls me up and he says, hey, Isaac, do you want to work this job? Say, I don't think it's offered for the I truth of the problem. matter. Or, I mean, that, can we that's do? fine. I'll, I'll overrule the objection. Go ahead. At some point in time, did you stop working at the Viper Room for Mr. Depp? Oh, yeah. When was that? Well, I worked from 93 to 98. In 98, I moved away. Did you return to L.A. again at some point? Yes, I did. When was that? I moved back uh, December of 2002. What did you do um, for work when you returned to L.A.? Well, I, for two weeks I worked at an art gallery and then I uh, went back to the Viper Room on New Year's Eve. How long were you working at the Viper Room at that point in time? It was another year and then the place changed hands. Were you working um, on anything else while you were working at the Viper Room in that time frame? Yeah, I, I was work uh, sidewise. I was teaching myself art. And what steps were you taking to teach yourself art at that time? Books, learning how to draw and uh, paint and uh, taking community cl uh, college classes. At some point in time, did you uh, begin pursuing art at a, on a full-time scale? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did that come about? Well, I was working at, working at the Viper Room, taking classes, and then at, uh, uh, at one point, the club changed hands completely after a year, 2004. And I was given a choice of either keep working for these new owners or uh, Johnny out of his pocket was going to give a severance pay to whoever didn't want to work there uh, anymore. So I took the severance pay and then it helped me continue on to to finish community classes, private classes, and then be able to transfer to uh, Cal State University. And did you get a degree from Cal State University? Yes, I did. What degree was that? BFA. What year? 2010. Um, after you received your BFA, did you continue to pursue art full-time? Yeah. Did Mr. Depp ever express an interest in your art? Yeah. When was the first time that happened? Well, first time you saw a painting in 2008, and then the next time was 20, uh, 2012. Uh, I had uh, made a painting and sent it to my best friend uh, uh, email uh, in an email, and uh, he forwarded it to Johnny, and Johnny emailed back saying, hey, when Isaac wants to sell that, uh, whenever he wants to sell that, to go ahead and get in touch with me because I want to buy it. Did Mr. Depp ever buy that painting? No. Why not? Because when I brought over paintings, I, I had moved back to uh, California and I, I brought over a bunch of paintings for him to look at and see if he wants any. To buy, buy any, and he 
looked at me and says, I got an idea. How about I be your patron? And we put together an art show, make some make make a body of work, and then we'll I'll throw a party and invite people and I'll sell the stuff for you and you could keep all the money. So he didn't he didn't buy any paintings there. Instead he offered me a complete patronship. So what did you understand he meant by um, becoming your patron? Well, he was gonna financially make it possible for me to just paint every day and put together a body of work so that way then it could be sold. How did he plan to do that? Objection to what he planned on doing. What did you understand he planned to do to, well, to could, make that possible for you? I could tell you, I could tell you that uh, it, it, what it included was that the next day I ended up moving into he he he's, uh, I, I moved into a, a art studio penthouse at the Eastern Columbia building. It was listen, I got a place for you to go ahead and li uh, live and work and put the, this body of of art together, and uh, I'll take care of you. You don't have to worry about anything. And what was the place where you were going to live that Mr. Depp offered you? The Eastern Columbia building. Did you, um, did you take him up on that offer to live at the Eastern Columbia building? Yeah, of course. <laughs> and uh, how did that make you feel? I started crying. Is you know, one day, you, one day you're in your mother's garage selling paintings for $100, $200, $300 on eBay. Next thing you know, you, you, it's an art show and like you don't have to worry about Deadly Squat. Of course, of course. I, I, was, I was flipping out. When did you move into the Eastern Columbia building? The next day after we met and we talked. The next day, the next day I get, I get a phone call from a guy named Kevin Murphy who is working for Johnny and I go to, and he says, hey, meet me at this address. And I go and I meet him and here I am in front of this building. This is a beautiful building. This is like, you know, it's whatever, 13 floors, but it's like from the 1930s. Some Art Deco, beautiful building. And I'm looking, I'll go, all right, this is unreal. What, there's gonna be, you know, all right, it's gonna be one of these apartments or whatever, one of these places here. I go in with uh, Kevin Murphy. He takes me all the way up to the roof. We go, we go to, uh, into penthouse two, and this, I walk in, and I'm like crying, going, this is, a, it's beautiful. This is like a, a mansion uh, situation to me. Mr. Bridge, how long did you end up living at the Eastern Columbia building? Three years and seven months. Um, Your Honor, I'd like to show the witness plaintiff's exhibit 116. All right, 116. Am I looking at something? You will in a second, sir. It's not on the screen. I'm just going to pull up a paper copy for okay. a moment. We can see it, but he can't see it.
Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. We'll just use a paper copy. We'll get this resolved at lunchtime. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. Mr. Bruch, do you recognize the document um, that you're looking at that's been marked as Plaintiff's Exhibit 116? Yeah. What, and what is it? This is uh, the floor plan of the roof. Uh, all the penthouses up on, uh, on the roof at uh, the East and Columbia. And that's the building where you lived um, starting in uh, March 2013, is that right? I moved in the first week of uh, March uh, 2013, yeah. Your Honor, at this time I'd like to move into um, evidence, Plaintiff's Exhibit 116, please. No objection, Your Honor. All right, 116 in evidence, you can publish to the jury. Is it, I'm sorry, Your Honor, I just want to be sure that- Yeah, they, they can see it in the gallery, see okay. it. We'll just have to work on that right, screen. Thanks. Thank you, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Bruch, can you um, describe for the jury what um, is depicted here in Exhibit 116? Uh, yeah, that, uh, so the right side of this uh, graph is, uh, there's a pool there, there's, a, uh, there's uh, another uh, top of another apartment that actually starts on the floor below. It's a two-story apartment. Um, but there's a pool there, and there's a, a, a gym, workout room. And the left side, there's a, at the bottom, there's an X, and that's uh, the elevator. And so you walk out of the elevator, you make a little uh, left, and there's part of penthouse five right there straight ahead and then you keep walking straight and then you make a left a sharp left and the actual penthouse five is straight ahead and then you hang a right and you walk, start walking up that way on your right is going to be penthouse one on your left is going to be penthouse four when you get to the end of that corridor this is the door for penthouse three and if you hang a right oh look there it is it came up on the screen <laughs> and if you hang a right and you go down to the end is the door to penthouse two that's the apartment that i lived in and who did you understand owned these penthouses oh johnny owned them all which one did you live in penthouse two was anyone else living um, in the penthouses at the time that you moved in in March 2013? No, I was the first one to move in. I moved in the first week of March, and then a couple of weeks later, two, three weeks later, then Johnny and Amber moved in, and then after that, the next one to move in is Rocky, Raquel Pennington, Amber's uh, friend, and then at some point her sister moved in, Whitney, and uh, also, uh, at some point, uh, Rocky's uh, boyfriend moved in with her in penthouse one. So I believe you just testified that uh, Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd moved in uh, shortly after you moved in, is that right? Yes. And which penthouse did they move into? Penthouse three. And then you testified, I believe, that um, uh, someone named Rocky Pennington moved in? Yes. Who was Rocky Pennington? Amber Heard's friend from Texas, and I, I think they made, I don't know, I'm not sure if they told me that they moved out there together or something like that, but um, yeah, her friend. And later you said that um, her boyfriend moved in with her. What was his name? Josh, Josh Drew. And which unit did they live in? Penthouse one. And I believe you also testified that um, Whitney moved in. Who was Whitney? Whitney uh, Heard. Uh, she's married, so she's got a different last name. I'm not sure what it is. But uh, Amber's sister, Whitney. And which of the units did um, Ms. Heard's sister li live in? Four. Um, can you tell the jury a little bit about your relationships um, with Ms. Heard? Um, Ms. Pennington, Mr. Drew, um, and uh, Ms. Heard, um, sister? Oh, yeah. I, I was friends with all of them. I loved them all. They all treated me with respect. Was, we had it was 
great. Uh, you know, I'm an old time friend of Johnny's living, living there and we we're looking out for each other. We became great friends. I fell in love with the, all of them. When you moved in um, to Penthouse 2, you were working on an art show with Mr. Depp, right? Yeah, that, that's the entire reason that I'm there, is to, to, the, to uh, uh, work and put together this art show. And did you have a time frame that you expected to be able to put on that art show? At first, when we first powwowed this idea, when, you know, uh, it's, it, we talked about, all right, what do we do? You know, what's, what's this show going to be? What, how many paintings is it, is it going to be? And we came up with a number, okay, so there's going to be a certain body of work. I'm not, I'm not a known person. I'm just some schnook painter. It's, so there's, and if I was a famous painter, I could make five paintings and, and the room will fill up. But so we decided, okay, like 25 pieces of work, large scale, and I w and Johnny says, hey, what? How long you think this will take? I said, I've never done it before. I don't know, maybe a few months. And were you able to comp complete the paintings in the in a few months? No, it's it's <laughs> after. It took me to, to in order to make two large scale paintings. It took me like to almost two months. And I'm t I'm start freaking out, going. Uh, I'm only got two paintings, and all right, I got to do 25. I said f a few months, so I ended up going to Johnny's place and and saying, "Hey, look, dude, this is gonna take a lot longer than a f a, a, a few months. I I could only make two paintings." And how did Mr. Depp react? He looks at me and he starts laughing, and he says, "Ike." Don't worry, I do not care. I just want you to paint however long it takes. Just, I want you to paint every day. During the course of time that you were living at the Eastern Columbia building, um, did Mr. Depp ever give you any money? Yeah. How much did he give you? Over a period of four years of the patronship, I, ca I ballpark it calculated probably around 100,000. And how, how did you come up with that amount? Well, from the first from the first get go, when I said, "Hey, look, I need dough, you know, to buy stuff and 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 to you know do this," he I ended up getting an envelope the next day with five thousand dollars in it, and then I budgeted it and and stretched it out and you know and so every few months I'd I'd get an envelope. It could have uh, that uh, I didn't know if it was going to be the same amount, but it ended up being the same amount, which was wow. Uh, so basically, around five grand every few months. So in a year, it's twenty grand. But then also, there was t a peri uh, maybe a, a year or two might have been that it was five times I had to ask for for dough, or it was four. And then on top of it, so I so right there, that could be eighty grand or ninety grand. And then on top of that, I ended up uh, uh, getting a herniated disc. He sent me to the doctors to get an MRI and and see the doctor, get an MRI, and it, there was ten weeks of of uh, therapy that he covered, so I throw that in there too, and I ended up coming up with the figure of 100, 100 grand. Could be a little less, could be a little more. What was your understanding of whether Mr. Depp intended to be paid back for that oh. money that he provided to you? There's no, it's, he, that's not even the thought of being paid back. This is something that he wanted to see happen. This is something he, he invested in, to, 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 he knew was, he had to. He was going to spend money to make it happen for me to survive and paint and create this thing that he wanted to see because he liked the art. And so there was, and there was no payback. And the the whole thing was about him selling the art, so that way I so that way I keep all the money. He didn't expect anything. It was he was doing this as a friend, as he's done with many other friends. I'll sustain the last sentence of his, his, his statement. Could, could 
explain to the jury that striking means they didn't. Right, we, we've done that, but that's fine. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Bruch, did there come a time when you um, decided that you planned to pay Mr. Depp back? Oh, yeah. That f for me, when, uh, when he, he, he's, he's told me he had a money situation going on, for me, it was like this guy just changed. He's been, he's been uh, making it possible for me to live and work and, 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 and make product and that and and I'm uh, by that expense I'm part of the problem it's like wh how do I help him how how can I help him I mean he's sharing his sandwich with me you know it's like if I how, how do I sh how do I share that my half my sandwich with him give him that half to make something up that's it's you you don't you don't not do anything and said, the only thing I got is paintings. So I, I stood up when he, he's, he's telling me what he's telling me about his money situation. And for me, I said, hey, it's, this is, if these things ever sell, we got to split this 50-50 and I ain't taking no for an answer, something. I got to add, I got to put something into this. So uh, as the, for me, I looked at it like he's got to, he has to get something back. Mr. Bruch, during your time living at the Eastern Columbia building, did you develop a relationship uh, with the defendant in this case, Ms. Hurd? Yeah. And did you get along with Ms. Hurd? I loved her. I fell in love with her just like Johnny fell in love with her. I fell in love with her. She's uh, t uh, t totally respectful, gracious to me. Uh, that she's got great teeth, uh, that she treated me with complete respect. Anytime I walk into the, she's at the Yuma wise, total uh, locker, locker room Yuma, demented Yuma, totally laughed at, you know, the jokes, uh, made the jokes, totally got along with her. Every time I walked into that place, Isaac, you want something to eat? Isaac, you want something to drink? Every time. There's only one time I remember that she didn't offer because I walked in and she's in the kitchen at the counter and she's doing a beauty facial mask and uh, so she can't offer me. And I'm going, hey, is that something that can help me? And she looked at me and she goes, no. And that, and I'm laughing and then she left after because she didn't realize she was making a joke. So, um, yeah, Mr. I loved her. Mr. Baruch, did Ms. Hurd ever visit you in your penthouse? Yeah. Do you recall the first time that she visited you there? Yes. When was that? The first time is that uh, it's in March when they moved in. And they were there for a, a, a couple of days, and I didn't even know. And Johnny had called me, says, hey, come over, meet my girl, and that, and then the, and so I did, and then the next day, they came over to my place uh, for the first time to see how I had set up the art studio, the uh, lights, and, you know, just what's my painting set up and stuff, and to look at other paintings. And they walked in, and I remember the first thing she said was, I hope we didn't keep you up last night because of all the yelling. And I I looked at her and it says, no, these walls are like three feet thick. I don't hear deadly squat. How did she seem when she said that to you? Well, she's is it semi joking and inquisitive, you know, like they did, you know, to find out. Um, in your three and a half years living at the Eastern Columbia building, did you have opportunities to observe Mr. Depp's and Miss Hurd's uh, relationship? Yeah. Can you describe uh, what you observed about their relationship? They were always loving with each other. They treated each other like gold, you know, kissing and, and you know, can, what can I get you type of thing, you know, being kind with each other. Always loving, always a loving situation. How often would you say you interacted with Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd? If they were there, because they're traveling, they're doing, they're working and doing stuff. If they were there, I saw them maybe two, three times a week. Could maybe uh, uh, there might be one time, one time a week that I see them, that I go over to hang out or, you know, 
see them or they might come or Johnny might come over to visit or you know like that since you've known them um, did you ever see them get physically violent with each other never did you ever see them argue yes how, how many times probably like twice um, can you describe the arguments that you witnessed? The first argument that I remember was uh, walking in. Uh, there was a it was a telephone argument. Johnny's at the kitchen table and he's argue he's 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 screaming about something, and on the other line because it's on speaker and he's talking with the phone at at the phone. Uh, the other person is, is Amber and that she's in New York and he's, uh, at the kitchen table and, uh, they're arguing and he's going, who is it? Who is it? And she's saying, oh, baby, come on, please don't, what are you doing, baby? Why are you being like this, baby? And this went on for a little while and I'm listening and then he hangs up. She calls back again. And it's the same thing. Who is it? What's going on? Who is it? And she's she's saying, "Oh, come on, baby, don't be. What are you What are you doing, baby?" And and then hang up the phone again. The third time it happens, I'm saying, "This what, there's no solution in this conversation." I grab the phone from him and I says, "Hey, Amber, this is Isaac. Listen, this conversation is now over." And I hung up the phone. And. She didn't call back again, and he went to the couch and went to bed. <clears throat> I believe you said you saw them argue twice. Was there another time that you saw them argue? Uh, I ended up uh, going over, and there's at the kitchen table is Johnny, is Amber, is uh, Rocky, and Josh. And, they're pa and I'm going, what are you guys doing? And they're hanging out and they're power, p trying to plot a f to figure out a way how to get rid of Whitney to not live there anymore. And I felt bad. I like Whitney. So, was, you know, oh, well, you know, that's, that's going to be a drag. And, uh, I was, I was, you know, what are you plotting? You know, how do you figure out? Hey, lend your sister some dough and let her move out. But, you know, they're trying to figure something out something differently or whatever. At one point, so uh, there was a point, Johnny got completely, uh, you know, flustered and, uh, and frustrated, and he got up and he walks away, and as he's walking away, he says, figure it out. And that was it. That was the whole thing. I don't know if you want to call it, I don't think you uh, might call that an argument, but. Uh, Your Honor, I'm about to um, switch gears a little bit. It might okay. be a good time for a mid-morning break. Perfect. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll go ahead and uh, have you take your morning recess for 15 minutes, okay? Just remember to not talk to anybody and do not do any outside research, okay? And we'll see you back here in 15 minutes. Do I stand? You can, you can stay right here. That's fine. You don't have to stand. Thank you. All right. Sir, I just want to remind you, since you're still on the stand under oath, you can't talk to any of the attorneys or Mr. Hurt at this time until your testimony is done, okay? Okay. All right, and we'll be back, and we'll be back at 1145, okay? Right. I got to stay here the yeah, whole time? Yeah, you have to stay the whole time. You can move. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yes, ma'am. Your next question. Mr. Baruch, were We're you back. still... back. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you for coming back. Yes. Um, were you still living in Penthouse 2 of the Eastern Columbia Building on May 21st, 2016? Yes. yes. Do you recall what you were doing that evening? Yes. What were you doing? I was out. It was evening time. I'm out in the neighborhood, and I'm on my way home. I get a phone call from my friend to, uh, who wants to know if I want to go out and eat. I said I just ate, but uh, I'm five minutes away from from the Eastern Columbia building home, 
and that uh, go across the street, get something to eat, and uh, bring it up for takeout, and we'll go upstairs to my joint and we'll eat and yeah. Did you meet your friend back at the Eastern Columbia building? Yeah. Around what time was that? 9.30. What happened after you met your friend? We went upstairs. Uh, can we pull up um, Plaintiff's Exhibit 116 again, please? And Your Honor, given that this has already been admitted, I'd ask that it be published. All right, that's fine. You can publish it. He just can't see it. Okay, he still has it. Mr. Bridge, is it on the screen in front of you? Yeah. Okay, great. Yes. Mr. Bridge, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions about what happened after you went upstairs that evening. Um, and it may be helpful for you. There are controls on that screen um, that you can use to sort of mark the exhibit to show the jury the, the spots that you're talking about and, and identifying. So oh. if, you, if you just touch it, you, it'll, it'll make a mark. So you don't have to touch the top. That's fine. Do I touch no. something on menu here? No, you don't. Nope. Just wait and you can oh. touch it whenever she needs you to, to mark it. Just wherever I touch it, it's going to make a mark. It will. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Birch, when you um, got upstairs that evening with your friend around 9.30, yeah. um, what did you see? We got out of the elevator and, you know, just like in the graph, you, you make a left and then you turn the corner. When we walked out, I noticed on the floor there's uh, shards of glass, there's pieces of glass. And so, you know, oops, just looking going, oh, something busted. Could be one of the sconces or something like that and kept walking. Can you mark on the exhibit where you saw the broken glass that evening? Yeah. Right there. Right where you could go left or you could go right. And if you wanted to go to the pool area, that's, you could, there's an exit that way. So you could either go right or you go left. You go left, you're in the apartment, going in the hallway through the apartment. Well, you go right, right there in that spot. And did you continue on to your penthouse after you saw the broken glass? Oh yeah, so we walk, walk around, and then we make the turn. We hang the right past the uh, penthouse five, and we stop right in front of, right here. What, and why did you stop right there? Oh, stopped in front of here, pen, penthouse one, which is more, it's more, right there because there's this puddle of wine, huge puddle of wine on the floor that's in front of the door, and there's a, a wine, uh, the splashed wine that's dripping down the wall. And so we stopped, and I'm looking at it and going, look at this, these, someone must have got hammered. These guys probably had a party. And, and at that point, right then, as soon as I said that, the door opens up, and it's Josh Drew, who pokes his head out the door, only enough for his head to come out. And he's pretty bug-eyed and looks distraught. And I look at him and I go, what's up with the spilt wine? And I figure and I get an explanation or whatever. And uh, he says, he looked at me and just said, rough day, had a rough day. And at that point, I got concerned and said to him, because I'm friends with, with him, you know? I got concerned, I said, hey, you okay? You want me to help you with something? Do you need help? He said, no, it's okay, we got it. And I said, okay. And I, me and my buddy took off and went into my place. And what did you do after that? He, my buddy ate, uh, I believe he had pizza from across the street and uh, we talked, we yapped for a while and you know, could, could be, I could yap, so it could, you know, it could take, we were there probably an hour and change or something like that. And then, uh, he's, you know, we're done. So it's, I walked, I walked him out and walked down, went to the elevator, walked out, went to the elevator, we went downstairs, I walked them out the door, finished the, to finish the conversation that we were having, and I said, all right, see ya. And then I went back in, 
I went upstairs and I went to bed. Around what time was that that you went back into the Eastern Columbia building? You know something, it's, it's, if we got there at like around 9.30 and we, we're talking, I don't know, an hour, or two, an hour and a half, two hours, you know, somewhere around 11 o'clock, I would think. We can go ahead and take um, Exhibit 116 down. <clears throat> Mr. Baruch, can you um, describe for the jury the events of the next day, May 22nd, 2016? Yes. It's my birthday. May 22nd is my birthday. I wake up. I end up uh, texting Johnny and saying, hey, I'm going to be in town because he's not staying at the, at the Eastern Columbia building. He's staying in a house in, in town, okay? And uh, so I texted him, it's my birthday. I said, listen, I'm gonna be in town. Uh, I'm gonna come by and to, uh, to have a birthday drink. Okay. I didn't t hear from him, you know, I didn't get an answer back, but I said, that's what I'm doing. If that happens, that happens. But, so it was uh, around t uh, noon, noon time. Uh, that I so I left. I walked out of my apartment, and I go through the hallway. As you see the graph, I go through the hallway and I turn the corner from Penthouse Street. And uh, as I'm walking down, well, who do I see? I see a group of people. It's a guy in black clothes, uh, a, a black shirt, black pants, Amber Heard. And I see Josh Drew, who's leaning up against the door, and the door is open. This door is open. Something's going on. And as I'm walking up, I'm saying, hey, what's up? What are you guys doing? And then Amber turns to me as I'm walking up. Amber turns to me, and she says, uh, Johnny came by last night. He got violent. So I'm changing the locks on one, three, and five. And I'm look at her, and, and she goes, oh, and don't worry about two. You're okay. And at this point, I'm now walking past. So now we're all in front of, this, of the open door of the apartment. And I see there's two guys, two locksmiths, working on the door. So now I'm standing on one side. And you, uh, you have Josh Drew on one side of the door. You got the two locksmiths with the door open, working on it. Sunlight's, the, the sun's coming through the door, sunlight from windows. And then Amber is in, is in front of me, and there's the security guy. And, and that, with two feet away from each other, talking. And she introduces me as, she, as she's finishing, saying, uh, oh, don't worry about your, uh, your apartment. She says, oh, and this is a security guard that I got that who's going to be hanging around. And she and I got introduced. She introduced me to him, and I shook his hand. He gave me a card, which I lost. And, uh, and that, and I'm kind of taking this in and going, and I said, wait, what, what happened? What's, what's going on? And... Uh, at that point, Josh Drew looks at me and gives me the high sign to like, hey, I'll, you know, follow me. I'll, uh, I'll tell you in private. And, Mr. Uh, Rich, when you were speaking with Ms. Hurd, how close were you standing to her? Like I said, two, I'm two feet, a foot and a half, two feet away. We're all two feet. And how was the lighting in that area? There's lights in the hallway, but we're standing in, and we're standing in an open doorway that the wall this, uh, is all windows. Sunlight's coming through, and it's, it's, you can operate in this light. There's that much light. Did you notice any marks on her face when you were speaking with her? No. Did you see any bruises? No. Did you see any redness? No. Did you notice any swelling? No. Did it look like Ms. Hurd was wearing any makeup? No. Had you seen her wearing makeup before? Yeah. And you had seen her not wearing makeup before? 
Yeah, I've seen, like I said, with face, doing, with the face mask, doing a face mask, no makeup, hanging around, the, uh, waking up in the morning, uh, no uh, uh, with makeup, glammed out to go out. And it's, it's three and a half years of seeing her in different, uh, different forms. Did you speak with Mr. Drew about anything at that point? Well, yeah, after I said that, uh, uh, hey, what's going on? And he gave me the high sign to like, hey, follow him. We went into my apartment and had a conversation. And what happened um, after you had that conversation with Mr. Drew? We left the apartment and we we go walking back uh, towards uh, Penthouse One. And as I'm walking back, I'm, I say to Amber, as I'm walking up, he hit you? And she goes, yeah, he threw a phone at me and hit me. And I'm looking, because I had just seen her two feet away, and I'm going, where? And she puts her head out. She puts her face out like that for me to look at her, the right side of her face. And I'm looking, but at that point also, I'm looking and I turn, I turn around, get on the other side, we're in the doorway. So I'm on this side with the light shining this way from the doorway with the lights above, and, but the sunshine. And she's got a face out like this, looking, you know, to show me. And I'm looking and I go, I inspect the face. I'm looking at her forehead. I'm looking at the side of her, uh, side of her eye. I'm looking at her cheek. I'm looking at the, her chin. I'm looking at the other side of the face. I'm looking at the whole thing. And I don't see anything. I don't see anything to, to I don't see a, a cut, a bruise, swelling, redness. It's just Amber's face that she's going like this and showing me. So I'm not seeing anything. I back up and I'm making a joke. I make a joke going, well, I don't see anything, but maybe all the beauty from one side of your face to the other side of the face is outshining everything, so I can't see anything. And she's laughed and she's, you know, smiled. And I just looked at everybody and said, hey, this, it sounds nuts. And I went and I gave, I said, I gotta go. And I gave her a hug and kissed her on that side of the face. Kissed her on that side of the face and then I left. Said goodbye. What was her reaction when you kissed her on that side of the face? Nothing. Did she flinch? No. Did you see Ms. Hurd again the next day? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. When was that? So that's Monday. That was May 22nd, my birthday. So then the next day is uh, Monday, the 23rd. I had woken up. Uh, with a chest cold and uh, I heard a knock on the door and it's Amber. So I opened up the door. Around what time was that? That's, I want to say maybe around, maybe around noontime, maybe a little bit before. Maybe it could have been a little bit, I think around noontime again. And uh, I went downstairs and I opened up the door. And when you opened the door, did you have a good view of Miss Hurd? Absolutely, yeah. How was the lighting? Lighting's fine. Lighting from the, from outside, and there's light from uh, my place. Yeah, so there's the lighting was great. Did you see any marks on Ms. Hurd's face at that time? No, same thing like the, the 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 day before. There's no redness. There's no swelling. There's no bruises. There's no cuts. There's no nothing. This is Amber looking like Amber. Did you notice if she was wearing any makeup at that point? She didn't look like she was wearing makeup then either. What did Ms. Hurd say to you during that encounter? She was knocking on my door to see if uh, I would take uh, the house key, her house key, to let the cleaning lady in, because she had to go somewhere. And I, I, I woke up that day and I had some kind of chest cold thing. I was upstairs laying down. And so I, was, I looked at her and I said, hey, listen, I'm, I, I, I'm feeling sick. I'm going to be upstairs laying down this entire time for the day or whatever. And that uh, so I, I'm not, I can't do it. 
And then uh, she stood there and and uh, is like, well, I've got to figure out what to do. Like maybe if she was only dependent upon me to to give the housekeeper the key, it's the same. The housekeeper is, it cleans both of our places, and. Uh, so I said, hey, listen, why don't you go ahead and take the key and put it in an envelope and bring it downstairs to the concierge, you know, one of the, and the, that's where the key will be, and tell Hilda, who is the housekeeper, that uh, that's where the key is. And uh, that's it. And you're, you're set. And she was like, yeah, okay, I guess I could do that. And I'm, look, I'm three feet away from her, two and a half, three feet away from her talking with her. And how long did that conversation last? Three minutes. Did you see Ms. Hurd again the next day? Yes, I did. Where did you see her? All right. It, uh, I go down, to, I'm leaving the, my apartment on Tuesday to go downstairs to the cafe to go get something hot to drink. I still haven't shopped or did anything for what's a chest cold. And uh, so I need, wanted something hot to drink. I go downstairs, and uh, as I'm locking my door, that uh, all of a sudden a group of women sh uh, uh, walk come up to Penthouse Three because in the corridor on the graph you could see we share the same corridor. So I closed. I'm locking my door, and a group of women show up. Did you recognize who the women were? Three of them, yeah. Who were they? It was, you know, something. I'm unsure if it was four or five women, but it's uh, Amber, it's her sister Whitney, and it's uh, Mel uh, Melanie Iglesias, who's a makeup artist for Johnny and, and Amber, and then there's two other women. I'm, I'm that I didn't, I didn't recognize, but I'm not sure. Did you interact with the women at all? Well, I, I, after closing the door, Whitney, who calls me her spirit animal, came running, came running down the, you know, down the the hallway, going, Isaac, spirit animal, and I'm, I'm going, hey, listen, I'm not feeling so hot, I'm not feeling so good, and I get duck under her arms, you know, stop, and I, I love you, but stop, and I duck under her arms and. And uh, and I go past, and I'm now I'm passing the other ladies, uh, Amber and her, uh, who she's with, and uh, I'm I'm looking at them. They're laughing of this whole scene, and then that was it. And then I walked, went past, and went down and got some hot tea. Did you see Ms. Hurd's face during that encounter? It was a quick glance, but nothing, you know, nothing just, just shot out to me to like notice anything. Um, did you see Ms. Hurd again the day after that? Well, I saw her again that day. Oh, can you describe that, please? Yeah. That, that on the way back from me being outside at the cafe, getting uh, having a, a tea, I come walking back in, and now all her, her and her, the women that she was with are coming back out, and we're in the lobby. And so, and the the doors of the lobby, it's all windows, there's great light shining through the entire lobby. And the women, are, there's a table in the middle of the lobby, and her, uh, her friends, or uh, I don't know if they're friends or not, I know three, you know, one's a sister and the other one's a friend. They're coming, they're walking on one side of the table, and then she's on the other side of the table where I'm walking, and now we're, wa we're walking past each other, and she's, you know, of course, we're going to acknowledge each other and looking at each other. And now she, she's the sun shining right in our face. It's to my back because I'm walking in. And so that's like this and, and saying, all right, hey, all right, enjoy yourself. Have a good time or whatever, whatever you're doing, you know, and go by. And I went up and that was it. That was the second time that I saw her. And that's on Tuesday. And did you get a good look at her face during oh, that second encounter? Absolutely. The sun shining right on her face. Did you notice anything unusual about her face? Nothing. No, no, no uh, cuts, no bruises, no swelling, no uh, red redness, no. It's amber.
It's Amber's face. And then did you see Ms. Hurd again the day after that? Yes, I did. And that's Wednesday, May 25th? That's right. Where did you see her? At that point, I was like, okay, I got to shop for something to, because uh, otherwise I'm not going to get rid of this chest cold. I, I'm going to go to the store, and on the way back, in between the garage and the building, there's this room with, like, vestibule, you know, that's... Uh, that you have to walk through. And I'm coming in to go into the building and Amber and Whitney, her sister, are coming out of the building to go into the garage. And we met there. How long did you speak with them, if at all? Yeah, we spoke. That's so we're, it, we're facing each other. I'm with them, uh, Amber and Whitney, uh, across from me. We're two and a half feet, two feet away from each other talking. Of course, and so we stop, of course, to say, hey, what's up? What are you doing? Where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you coming from? I have bags of food in my hand of, of stuff that I went and I bought. And so I said, hey, I'm coming from shopping. I finally bought myself some stuff to get rid of this chest cold thing. And uh, they go, and this, they're going to the uh, CVS. And they look at me, and they and so what's yapping? Everything, everyone's smiling and stuff. And and she says, "You sure we you, we can't get you anything? Do you, how about we get you some aspirin or some you know some uh, cold stuff?" I said, "No, I think I got everything." And uh, that and they said, "You sure?" And I said, "Yeah, yeah, of course, I got it. Don't so don't sweat it." And. Uh, 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 you know, ki a kiss or whatever. I got my hands. I can't hug or whatever. So, and then, uh, uh, I was said to see you, and I went on, went up, and they went through the garage. That was the. That was that was it that day. Did you have a good look at her face during that conversation? Yes. This room. Yes. Yeah. This room. It's com it's it's completely lit. That it's a spot, and there's a camera uh, taking, uh, 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 you know, cameras always on a security camera, and all, always and so it's got good lighting and stuff because this is a spot where if you use your, uh, your fob key to to go into this into the building, well, the door takes a long time to you know it's, it's one of those things with the uh, pressure thing that the door just doesn't close shut. It takes a while to, for it to close. Someone could be in the garage who's not supposed to be in the garage, run and hold the door open. And that they, then they get into the apartment building and then who knows, some, maybe somebody gets ripped off. But so it's well lit for security reasons and that there's a, there's a camera there. It's taking pictures, uh, you know, doing what the camera does. Was Ms. Hurd wearing makeup during that um, discussion? Neither of them looked like they were wearing makeup at all. Whitney had this hat on that uh, it was a fun hat or whatever, uh, and that no, no, no makeup. I don't, I don't even know Whitney to, to be a, a, a makeup person. And that uh, Amber, no. She looked like she was, you know, just natural amber. It's, it's all, you know, just as always, no makeup. Did you notice any marks on Miss Hurd's face? No, no. Did you notice any swelling? No, no swelling. No, there's no nothing. There's no swelling, no bruising, no redness, no cuts, no, I don't even, you know, nothing. Turning back to uh, May 21st for a second, when you first heard that Ms. Hurd told you Mr. Depp had hit her, do you recall that? Say that again? We, when Ms. Hurd told you that Mr. Depp had hit her on May 22nd. Yeah, my birthday. How did you feel hearing her say that? All right. What's the relevance to how he felt? I mean, it's a present sense impression of how he I'll perceived that in that moment. I'll sustain the objection. Okay. 
Mr. Birch, did you see Ms. Hurd at all the rest of that week of May 23rd? No. Did you learn at some point in time that Ms. Hurd had filed for divorce from Mr. Depp? Say that again? Did you learn at some point in time that Ms. Hurd had filed for divorce from Mr. Depp? Yeah. How did you learn that? I learned it from the internet after the weekend around Ed's Probably Monday, sun, either Sunday or Monday, I'm on the internet and I end up seeing a picture of, it was the Friday of that, the, that week, the past week, and there's a picture of Amber wearing a black morning dress and with this brown mark on her cheek. And that she's, she's been to a, a divorce, you know, she went to go file for divorce. That's how I found out. Were you surprised when you saw that? Surprised is not the word. It's like, what the hell is this? What's going on? At any point when you had seen her um, during that prior week, had she told you that she intended to file for divorce? Objection. Leading. I'll, I'll allow it. Go ahead. You can answer the question, sir. What's the question again? At any point when you had seen her during that week, had Ms. Heard told you that she intended to file for divorce? No, no, she never once, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday or Friday, not even see it, no. There's no, I, I'm clueless. She does not, she did not say anything about divorce. So what did you think when you saw those pictures um, and read the articles and learned that she was filing for divorce? Okay. All right. I'm sorry, objection relevance to what right. he thought. It, I mean, it builds on all of the testimony he's given previously. Yes, right. I'll sustain the objection. When did you see Ms. Hurd next after that? She knocks on my door June 3rd, Friday, Friday, a Friday night, June 3rd. She knocks, I've, she knocks on my door around 11 o'clock. Is, and is the next time that I see her. And what happened when she knocked on your door on June 3rd? I opened the door. I opened up the door. And naturally, you know, something I'll say is, hey, how you doing? You know, to say hello. So I open up the door and say, hey, how you doing? And she looks at me and she says, I'm not feeling so hot that uh, I made some food. Would you like to come over and eat with me? And at that point, after you know everything I've seen, I looked at her. I said, "Listen, me and you, we're not going to talk anymore. After everything that I've just seen all week long, from from the past couple, the past week and change, you, uh, listen, I'm confused, I'm angry, and I'm frustrated by everything that I've seen. And that I think the best thing is for me and you that we don't talk anymore." Did That's, you say anything in response? Yes, she. In response to that, she looks at me and she says, I told Johnny I don't want anything. The lawyers are making me do all, all of this. And I, you know, that's what she said. Did you respond to Ms. Hart? No, what I was thinking was that to me when after saying that, after she said that to me, I'm thinking to myself, gay cock -um yum hey, how, you know, Oh, Your Honor. Honor. I'll I'm sustain that objection. Next question. Okay. Did you see any injuries on Ms. Hurd's face on June 3rd when you spoke with her? No. Did you ever speak with Ms. Hurd again after that? Well, she said to me uh, after uh, that, the lawyers are making me do all of this. Uh, then she's, uh, I was just looking at her and then she ended what she was saying by saying, uh, well, I'm sorry you feel that way. And I closed the door and would never talk to her ever again. Did you have any interactions with the staff at the Eastern Columbia building um, about Ms. Hurd's allegations uh, against Mr. Depp? Objection, Your Honor, may we approach? Okay.
Mr. Bridge, did you have any interactions with the staff of the Eastern Columbia building about Ms. Hurd's allegations against Mr. Depp? Yes. And at some point, uh, did you see a security video taken in the Eastern Columbia building? Yes. When was that? At, uh, sometime in June, maybe two weeks in or something like that. It's two, three weeks in. Can you describe um, what you saw in that video? Yes, I can. It was a video of uh, Amber and Whitney waiting uh, at the elevator, a mezzanine level, coming from the garage, obviously, and uh, waiting for the elevator. And Whitney does this to Amber. Pow! And hits her, to, like faking, hitting her in the face, going pow! And then they start laughing. Did Ms. Hurd react at all in that video to the fake punch that you observed Whitney throw? Yeah, the, she's laughing after doing it. They both, uh, you know, laughing at each other, with each other. Mr. Burridge, do you know who Elon Musk is? Sure. Have you ever seen Mr. Musk in person? Yeah. Where did you see him in person? First time was... Uh, I'm getting into the elevator on the rooftop, penthouse level. I'm get going into the elevator and he's coming out of the elevator, going past me. And when did that take place? This is after May. This is sometime June, it could be July, but after May. In that same year, 2016? Yeah. And when was the second time that you saw Mr. Musk? Uh, one morning waking up and going and opening up the shades to uh, the bedroom and it's on the second floor and it overlooks the balconies, our adjoining balconies, because my balcony joins with uh, John and Amber's uh, balcony. And that I, opening up the shades, I see uh, Elon Musk going through the, the balcony door on their side uh, to then walk down a common corridor to that then at the end leads to a, a door that you then you walk out to the rest of, of the rooftop and it could be, you go to the pool you go to the gym and stuff so I'm looking out and I, the view the the view out the window is of the both of our balconies so that's where I saw him and when was that Oh, I, sometimes it's, it's either June, July, some, but it's after May. Mr. Bruce, how long have you known Mr. Depp? Met him, I believe, in 1980, and uh, what's 42 years? Well, it's going to be 42 years. Have you ever seen uh, Mr. Depp be violent when angry with Ms. Hurd? Objection leading. I, I'll allow the question, okay. I'm allowed to answer? Yes, yes. Sir. What's the question again? Have you ever seen Mr. Depp be, be violent when angry with Ms. Hurd? No. Well, the, from what I said uh, from before, there was an argument that I walked in. So there's obviously there's the, that, but have I ever seen him be violent to her uh, with uh, physicality? No. Did you ever Never. see him hit her? Never. In your three and a half years living at the Eastern Columbia building next to Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd, did you ever observe any injuries or marks on Ms. Hurd? Objection leading, Your Honor. All right. I'll sustain as to leading. Good. Did you ever notice anything unusual about Ms. Hurd when you were living at the Eastern Columbia building with Objection her? Objection leading, Your Honor. I'll allow it. I can answer? Yes, sir. What's the question again? Did you ever notice anything unusual about Ms. Hurd during the time that you were living next door to her at the Eastern Columbia building? Besides having great teeth? No. Mr. Burridge, are you appreciative of everything that Mr. Depp has done for you? Objection, Your Honor. Leading and relevant. All right, I'll sustain us to leading. All right. Mr. Burridge, how do you feel about what Mr. Depp has done for you? Objection. Well, you know what? No, I'll go ahead. Okay, okay. go ahead. I think, that's, I think that's withdrawn. Go ahead. You can answer the question. Oh. Could just answer the question, sir. 
And the question is... How do you feel about everything that Mr. Depp has done for you? Oh, come on. This is, it's unreal. It's, you know, you think too much about it, you're going to cry. That uh, I appreciate everything that he's done for me. Um, you know, I, it's like stuff you can't pay back. Would you lie for him under oath? Oh, no, 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 no. Leading. All right, I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Have you given truthful testimony today, sir? Objection, Your Honor, leading. It's still leading. I'll sustain the objection. That's all I have. Okay, thank you. All right. Cross-examination. Let's start with the makeup. Now, you know that Ms. Hurd was... Excuse, excuse me. I I'm didn't sorry? hear the beginning of what you started saying. I said, let's start with the makeup. Okay. Okay. You're aware that Ms. Hurd, Ms. Hurd has both modeled and been an actor and had been for many years before you met her, correct? I knew she acted. I didn't know she was a model. Okay. D were you aware that she had a commercial uh, uh, agreement with L'Oreal, for example? When now or back then? What, what's your knowledge? I don't know any of that. Okay. Have you ever been with Ms. Hurd when she has put makeup on? I've been in the room, yeah, when she's putting, when makeup was getting put on her, yeah. When makeup was being put on her, was this for some acting role or something like that? It was an event that they were going to. Mm -hmm. So that was somebody else applying makeup to Ms. Yeah. Hurd, who was going to have some gala event that she was going to. Yeah. Okay. Have you ever been with Ms. Hurd in her bathroom or anything when she's applying her makeup in the morning? No. Okay. Do, do you, are you familiar with Amica cream? What is it? Amica. Amica? Yes. No. Okay. Do you know what type of foundation Ms. Hurd uses? No. Do you know what type of concealer Ms. Hurd uses? No. Do you know what type of tint Ms. Hurd uses? I have no clue. Do you know what types of powders Ms. Hurd uses? No. Okay. So when you're saying that you didn't notice any makeup, would it be fair to say that you, yourself, are not familiar with what type of makeup Amber Heard uses on a daily basis? I don't know what she uses on a daily basis. That's my point. Now, the first time that you saw her, which was May 22nd, Yeah. Ms. Heard was there. Were you aware she was on her way to somebody else's birthday party, not yours? but somebody else's that day? No. Okay. Can you tell me what her hairstyle was that day? It was just down. Down as in? Just regular. How uh, she has it up now, she's got some kind of hairstyle, but no, she's, she was no hair down, regular, no makeup, just hanging. Well, when you say no makeup, you don't know she was not wearing makeup, correct? For a fact? Correct. No. And you don't know whether she had applied Amica cream, correct? No. And I you, didn't even know what Amica cream is. And you don't know whether she had, had applied concealer or foundation or powder or tint, correct? That's correct. Okay. Now, if she's going out to a party, yeah. do you think she would want to have her bruise exposed? Objection, Your Honor. What's the objection? Calls for speculation. All right, I'll sustain the objection. Okay. Next question. So, um, do you recall what Ms. Hurd was wearing that day? You know something? I could have sworn she had on a schmata dress, a uh, hippie dress at that particular time, but I could be confusing it with June 3rd. She's got this Victorian type of uh, uh, long hippie dress that has embroidery, and I 
that she definitely was wearing that 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 night. All right, but but uh, let's go back to May twenty second. Do you yeah. recall what she was wearing? I could have swore she was wearing a uh, wearing a, a, another schmata dress that I've seen her hanging around uh, uh, the apartment with. And do you recall what color? No. Okay. Do you recall what jewelry Miss no. Heard was wearing that day? No. Okay. Now, you indicated that there was a security guard there, and there yes. was Josh Drew, correct? Yeah. And was there anyone else there? Yeah, the two locksmiths. Okay. So and also in the apartment, for a fleeting second, a person went walking by and who seemed to me look like it was Raquel Pennington, but it could be... It could have been uh, another friend that was supposedly staying with them. Okay, so you saw somebody come by. So, so how no, many? No, go go through the living room, and then they're out of the picture because they went upstairs. So they're at this. That's somebody that w else was in that room, and but walking by. Okay. Yeah. So, and you talked to Josh. What did Josh tell you? Josh when? Drew, he took you to the side. What did he tell you? Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. All right. I'll sustain the objection to hearsay. All right. Before you spoke with Josh Drew in the other room, what, if anything, had been said about what Mr. Depp did the night before? Objection to the extent it calls for hearsay, Your Honor. All right. Be a hearsay. Objection. I'll sustain that objection. I, I, I'm, not, I'm asking what, if anything. I, that, that was still solicit hearsay. What, but he already testified about what Amber said. I'll go back to that. Okay. So what exactly did Amber Heard tell you happened the night before? As I was walking up the first time, she t turned to me and said, Johnny came by last night and got violent. So I'm changing the locks on one, penthouse one, three, and five. Don't worry about your place. Okay. Did you ask her for any more specifics? On what about she meant by getting locks? violent? Huh? Did you ask her for any specifics about what she meant by he came by and got violent? No. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm going to jump you to the next day for a few and then I'm going to come back but let's go to the next day so the next day you testified that you saw her twice correct from Sunday no Monday I saw her once in the morning uh, to, I that's say when she came 12. by to ask if you could have the key or that you could leave the key for the house right, right for Hilda and you weren't feeling well right that's right okay so you wouldn't have been standing very close to Amber Right, because you were sick? Well, I opened up the door and I'm holding the door. We're like three feet away from each other. Yeah. Okay. And you told her you were sick, right? Yeah. Okay. Do you know where she was going out someplace, correct? She had it she was going somewhere. All yeah. right. She wasn't gonna be there. All right. Do you know whether she had applied any amica cream that morning to her face? No. Do you know whether she had applied any concealer to her face that morning? No. Do you know whether she had applied any foundation that morning? No. Do you know whether she had applied any tint that morning? No. Do you know whether she had applied any powder that morning? No. Okay. Now, the next day... I can tell you, she looked like she wasn't wearing any makeup. Right. And would you agree that people who are models and actors can be pretty darn good with putting makeup on so that you can't tell they're wearing makeup? Objection, Your Honor. Foundation calls for speculation. I, Spe I, I think that's a fair question to it, ask him. It, uh, I'll sustain as a speculation. Next, All right. next question. Do, do you have any knowledge of the skills of Amber Heard with respect to putting on makeup? Well, it can't be that good because she's got a friend who is a makeup artist who came over to do makeup, but I don't really know. Right, and, and that makeup artist that comes over does it when she's going to be on some show or in some big public event or gala, right? Yeah. Yeah, that makeup person, and you're talking about Melanie Iglesias, right? 
Uh, that right, makeup, yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. And that exactly. makeup person doesn't put Amber's makeup on every day for her, does she? I wouldn't know. How many times have you, did you see Melanie Iglesias put makeup on Amber? One time. Okay. It's just one time. Okay. So she wasn't living at Amber's house, right? No, no, no. Okay. I had, we, I, I hung out with her and her husband and Johnny and, uh, and Amber and, you know, over there one time eating. Uh, and then another time it was when I met her that, uh, seeing her put do makeup for these guys okay so so you don't you're not saying that that amber doesn't know how to put makeup on herself correct oh no i'm sure she does okay but again i would think she does you, you know but for the most i'll tell you what over three and a half years living around around each other for the most for the most part she's not a makeup wearing person, completely natural. Her rocky, total great complexion, Texas uh, natural neck girl next door, no makeup wearing, hanging out. Did Amber ever tell you she was not wearing makeup? Did she ever tell me? In, in any of those three when? and a half years that you're saying she wasn't wearing it around the house, did she ever say, I don't have a stitch of makeup on? As, m as many times as she's told me, I am wearing makeup, which is, I can't remember. So I don't know. Yeah, no. I, there's not one time I remember that, or okay. saying that. Okay. So now let's go to the next day. I think that's the day you've got the two times uh, that you saw her. She's with other people, yeah. and she's either going out or coming in, correct? Well, first time they're coming in, and the second time they're going out. So they've been out someplace before they're coming in, correct? Objection, Your Honor. Foundation? I'll allow it. You can answer the question, sir. Oh, I have no clue. Okay, okay. but they're, they're physically entering the house in other words they haven't been in the house they're coming to the house from someplace right oh i would have no idea when i walked out who knows they might have been out and in twice before that but i i don't know they okay. could be coming from another apartment to, you know coming you know to go there and i'm seeing them it could be the second time that they're entering this apartment or the first time or the third time yeah i don't know Okay. I have no idea. And, and, and do you know, so you don't know where they were? No, And so you have not. no idea whether they were out in public someplace, correct? No, of okay. course not. All I right. won't know that. All right. Um, and then the later time that you saw them that day, they were going out. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And do you know whether Amber had any Amica cream on that day? I don't know. I don't know. And I'll try to make this faster. Do you know whether Amber was wearing concealer, foundation, powder, or tint that day? I don't know. Okay. Now, the next day, I think you said it was she and Whitney. Is that correct? On Wednesday, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and again, do you know whether she was wearing any Amica cream? <laughs> Sir, if you could just answer I'm the sorry. question. I'm totally sorry. I'm Thank sorry. You, sir. That, uh, no. And do you know whether she was wearing concealer, foundation, powder, or tint? No. Okay. Can you tell me what Amber's hairstyle was on the 23rd? That's Monday. Like I said, when she knocks on my door, hairs down. Okay. Can you tell me what she was wearing that day? Not exactly, but if I, if best of my recollection, a pair of dungarees and a t-shirt. Okay. At the time when she knocked on my door to give me the key, if she went home to go change or something like that, I got no clue. Okay. Do you but remember what color the t-shirt was? I think it might have been white, best of my recollection. Do you remember what jewelry Amber had on? 
Okay, let's go to the next day, the, the Wednesday, and you've got all these people here. Next, next day is Tuesday. Okay, next day, Tuesday, is when you had the, the bunch of people coming together to her house the first time, right? Right. What was she wearing then? You want to know something? I do remember uh, of a, a women's beige uh, long coat, kind of like a, a woman's, uh, not a raincoat, but it could be similar to that. It was a beige long, kind of looking like a business coat type of thing, a female version of a Colombo jacket. Okay, and what was she wearing under it? Oh. I have no, I, I have no clue. Okay. And do you remember what jewelry she was wearing? No. Okay. Now, you said that on the 22nd that you kissed her on the cheek. What day? Uh, the 22nd, your birthday? 22nd, Sunday, yes. Okay. So, when you showed it the first time, you went like this, right? And then the next time when you said you did the kisses, you went like this. What's your typical way of kissing women when you greet them or I say goodbye? Did, I'm not understanding any of what you just did. Okay. So when you, well, well, I'll just leave it at Amber. When you, I take it that you would regularly kiss Amber on the cheek when you used to say hello and to say oh, goodbye? Yeah, yeah okay. absolutely. And, and tell us how you did that. Objection. Could you show? It? us how you did that? Which time regularly? Oh, did, which, did you have a different way of kissing her on the cheek different times? Or did you have a, a general way that you would greet or say goodbye to, to Amber with kisses? Regular, it's a regular, you know, you give a, you give a peck on the cheek. Or, you know, like you just touch cheeks and, and okay. that's that. So it's, it's, it's a pretty soft, it's kind of like a, almost a superficial one or is it a really hard one on the cheek? Nah. No, it's, uh, you know, just, uh, yeah, you, you kiss someone on the side of the cheek. I don't know, pressure-wise, what kind of talk uh, is there? Uh, I, I mean, is it, is it talk, just one of these little pecks, uh, or is it is it much harder? No, oh, it's a regular. You, it's, you, you touch, you know, you touch and boink, and that's that. Okay. So so you think it was pretty hard? You, you peck her on the cheek pretty hard every time? Objection, Your Honor. No, I'll sustain the objection if you want the next question. Okay. Do, you also showed that you did a, one like this. Did you ever do a, a two kiss when you greeted Amber? Two cheeks? No, I'm not European. I'm from <laughs> Brooklyn. No. That, no, you give, you know, Europeans do the, you know, right. both sides. Sometimes you even three. Bam, bam, bam. Bam, you know. But you, so, but you never did no. that? No, no, okay. no. All right, let's go to the fake punch. I want to make sure that I understand exactly what you remember seeing. Yeah. You said that it was two to three weeks into June. Is that correct? That you saw it? It's got to be somewhere in that period. Okay. To some, somewhere in the, the first three, if the, if I would say the first three weeks of June. All right. Uh, yeah, somewhere like that. Can, can you recall which week? No. Okay. So you saw Whitney and Amber. Was there anyone with them? No. Okay. Do you recall what either of them was wearing? Long jackets. Yes, actually I do. Okay. Long jackets. You know, overcoats. And how was Amber's hair styled that day? Down. Pulled back. Pulled back or well, down? Well, when I say pull, you know, it's like hairs down, you know, maybe because of something around the neck or whatever, pull, the hair is, you know, flip back or whatever. Not tied back. I don't remember if it was tied back, but just where it's full. It's full. Okay. That I remember. Okay. So now where were they standing when you watched this? This is uh, the, where were they standing? Yes. They're standing, waiting for one of the elevators on the mezzanine floor where there's, I guess you could see, there's cameras that, you know, has that view of the, 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 of the elevators on so the mezzanine on the, floor. So they're on the mezzanine level. Yeah, this is the waiting. same level 
This is the same level. There's apartments on that level. And that that's how the exit, how you get out to go to the garage. And so were they coming back from the garage? Well, if they're standing at the elevator outside, that it could be and waiting to get into the elevator on that floor. So it could be that maybe they came from outside. Maybe they know somebody who lives on that floor because there's apartments there. I got no clue where they're coming from. It's, it's, that's not even in, in the thought process. It's when I see that, when I see this, it's not like, well, I wonder where they're coming from. Okay. No, no, it's okay. just so, now, what I saw. Tell me where they were each standing. As I'm watching the video, this tape, uh, Amber's on the left and Whitney's on the right. Okay. And then tell me, just take us through. Tell me what you saw. Amber's on the Amber's on the left. Whitney's on the right. They're hanging out. Can I stand up? Yes, sir. And so here's Amber. Here's Whitney, and they're hanging, waiting for the elevator. And Whitney does it. They're looking at each other, yapping or whatever they're doing. And Whitney goes like this. Pow. Just a, a fake pow. And then they both start laughing, and then they're just standing there. Doing yapping, doing what they're doing. And how close does Whitney's fist get to Amber? Oh, I'm watching this. It's a fake thing. It's not. It's right, not right. like she went and she hit her no, own no, no. sister. No, but I'm she asking how close. She, she just, you know, going pow. If here's my face, if here's if if here's my face, you know, it's just coming by. You know, fake punch going by. This, you know, that far. Okay. Just making believe. Just making believe. Okay. It's a believe punch. Okay. And and then they both laugh. You say. Yeah, they both. You know, they just start. You know. Did Did you watch them get on the elevator? No. Okay. So the part that you saw, they the elevator never opened during that time. That's That's right. Okay. That is correct. And And how many seconds would you say, or minutes would you say, this little clip was? Oh, what I saw was 10 seconds, uh, 15 seconds. Okay. And do you recall what day that was? That I saw this? No, no, no. W was there a date on this, the video? Oh, I don't, I don't, uh, I, if there was, uh, it wasn't something that I acknowledged. Okay, great. Good. Thank you. All right, now let's go back to the argument that you witnessed between Mr. Depp and actually Ms. Hurd, who was on the phone or the speaker phone. Do you recall testifying about Say that? Say this again, start again, start yes. again. Yes, let's go back to you testified that you observed an argument between Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd. Do you recall that? You came into the room, Mr. Depp had yeah. Amber on speaker phone. Do you recall that? Yeah. Okay, Mr. Mr. Depp was drunk. Would you agree? Yeah. Okay. And do you recall that Amber was actually in London, not New York? No. You don't recall that? No, I thought it's, it's I think I thought it was she was in New York. Okay. And you recall that Mr. Depp was accusing Amber of sleeping with somebody, right? There was somebody else in the room with her and that's that's and that's what they were arguing about are you sure that mr depp wasn't thinking there was someone in the room and she was trying to tell him there wasn't somebody in the room he uh say that again are you sure he wasn't saying someone was in the room and she was trying to convince him there wasn't anybody in the room well, he said that, that he heard uh, the other voice. Okay, and were, did you hear the voice? Oh, no. Okay. I walked in there already, it's, this is already in motion. Right, and Amber's saying, why are you saying that, right? Amber was, Amber was saying a 
Come on, baby. Why are you being like this? What are you? What are you doing? Come on, Johnny. What? There's no need. To, why are you being like this? Right. And it was taunting. Uh, how, how is it taunting to say why are why are you accusing me of having somebody in my room? Because they were in the midst of no solution. At that point, it's it would be if it, instead of taunting, saying, listen, John, let's talk tomorrow and let's end this conversation right now and every and and we'll talk tomorrow and we'll get to an understanding because there's not going to be any solution right now. But there was none of that. It was just con continuous. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. So and that kept it going. If if Mr. Depp in his drunken state was suffering from delusions and, and thought he heard a voice and wasn't, do you think it would have been reasonable for Amber to be saying, what's going on? Why are you saying this? What's going on? Objection, Your Honor. Speculation. I'll allow the question if you can answer it. You can answer the question, sir, if you... Would I think it would be what? If, if Mr. Depp was suffering from delusions and there wasn't anybody in the room and he hadn't heard a voice but thinks he's hearing a voice, would it be reasonable for Amber to be trying to figure out what's going on? Objection, Your Honor. Hypothetical speculation. I'll sustain as a speculation to that question. Okay. And, and the bottom line is you came in on the call so you don't know what he said first or whether there was any voices, correct? Whether he heard voices yes. besides hers? Yes. No, I didn't hear the beginning of the conversation. Okay. And then after the hang up, he went straight to bed, right? No, after the first hang up, well. she, she calls back again, which uh, was, was, was it necessary? I don't know. And do then you know a third whether time. She knew, do you know whether she knew whether he accidentally hung, hung up or not? That he accidentally hung up? Right. Do you know whether she knew whether whether he hung up intentionally or accidentally? No, I, the same okay. way that I wouldn't know if, like, you know, yeah, she didn't know that the telephone line got cut. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, so after the three calls that you testified about, he went straight to bed, right? Went to the couch and laid down. Right. And, yeah. and he was drunk. Yeah, and went, and he went, went to sleep. Yeah, he went out. Do you know whether he'd taken any drugs that night? Now, you have known, uh, you've already testified, you've known him for 42 years. He, yeah. You didn't pay rent at the penthouse, correct? No, no one did. Right, right, right. Okay, and then after you finished at the penthouse, you went over and lived with him in Sweetser, correct? I live in uh, one of his house, uh, house that he owns on Sweetser. And you still live there? Yes. And rent-free, correct? Yes. Okay. And uh, is it has other than the hundred thousand? You never paid that back, right? The hundred thousand that he's given you. No, that's not. That's a thing that that that's a thing for me. When I if the, how I look at it and stuff, at some point I would love to uh, pay it back, pay back uh, some that money. But that's not something that is expected. That's he's expecting. Would you say so, you're kind of beholden to Mr. Dell? No, I'm not beholden at all. Uh, he, he's given you $100,000. He's put Over you in that nice... Of, I'm sorry. I started... I didn't hear the whole question. Can he, you say he, it again? You were rent-free in, in the penthouses for a number of years, and now you've been rent-free ever since in Sweet, sir? That's, that's a nice friend. Yeah, okay. And you're, I think you testified already, you're pretty angry with Ms. Hurd, right? When? I, I wrote it down that you Oh, are... about all the phony, about the phony pictures what? that were that were taken and put you... in uh, tabloids, and about the fake narrative, and about, uh, and the way she's uh, try, uh, at trying to, got a... Uh, a, a, a fraudulent DV claim to extort and blackmail uh, 
a man? Uh, yeah, that kind of got me uh, uh, pretty angry frustrated, confused, angry, upset. Yes, which is why I said the best thing for us to do is not to talk to each other. Okay. And, yes. And was it fair to say you're still angry with her? Oh, you know something? It's six years. But it's we just heard six you give years. your version. Am I angry anymore? I'm not, you know, I, what I am is tired, and I want this all to end. Her to go heal, him to go heal. She, you know, you, the, it, it, so many people are, have been affected by this malicious lie that she started and she created, and it's gone out the door and around the world. And so I don't need, I, I can't even paint anymore. I've stopped painting for the last who knows how many years. And that's affected by stuff. It's, it's, it, I don't, I, I'm not angry at anybody. I want the best for her, for her to take her responsibility, heal, and, 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 and move on, move on. And, and for Johnny, John, you know, it's, his family has been completely wrecked by all of this stuff. And it's not, it's, it's, it's not, uh, it's not fair. It's not right what, ha what she did and what happened for so many people to get affected from this. It's, it's insane and Mr. Baruch, this, how this happened. And Mr. Baruch, if in fact she's telling the truth, and if in fact, Mr. Depp, who has engaged in enormous rage and domestic abuse and violence of Amber over a period of time that you wouldn't know about, then maybe it's time for him to take responsibility, don't you think? Objection, Your Honor. What's Specu the objection? Speculation. Lack of foundation. Relevance. There's speculation. It's, it, he just went off on this rant and rave about assuming that she's... You, you asked a question. So I, I didn't ask a question that but, launched that. I, I'm going to sustain the objection. Okay, right, next you don't... I'll, I'll ask this. Okay. Mr. Broach, you don't know whether Mr. Depp has committed domestic violence of Amber Heard, do you? I never, I never witnessed... I never saw or witnessed whatever type of claim that is that is being said, ever. Okay. I've never seen him be violent since kid, since teenagers from I, first meeting. I didn't ask you that. I said you don't know whether he has committed domestic violence or abuse on Amber Heard. Isn't that correct? That's correct. I did okay. not witness any physical. Right. Violence. But you have seen Mr. Depp use drugs as well as drink and be drunk, correct? Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, I've how, partaken. I'm going to ask you to take a look. Let's, let's pick up uh, Depp exhibit number 116 again. It's already in, if we can have that published to the jury. Ms. Bernhoff, how, how much more do you think you have? I, I think I can finish it up if you okay, give me sure, five or sure. ten more no, minutes, well. maybe, maybe less. Okay, all right. I'll Thank hold you. you to that. Okay. Okay. So, Mr. Bruce, I just want to make sure that I understand. Uh, this is the, the penthouse thing, and you Ms. said... Ms. Bernhoff, if you could go to the microphone, it's just so hard to hear yeah, you. Yeah, I just realized that. Thank you. Thank I appreciate you. it. Um, so, on this diagram, when you got out of the... L was You said 9.30 today, but in fact... It was between 9.30 and 10 that you came back with your friend, correct? No, it was around 9.30. It could be five minutes one way, five minutes the other way. Could have been... Do you, this. Recall, do you recall saying it was between 9 and 9, or between 9.30 and 10 earlier? Today? No. Did I say that? Do you recall... Do you recall... Are you sure it was 9.30, give or take five minutes, or could it have been between 9.30 and 10? It was 9.30, give or take five minutes, five to ten minutes, either way. And you saw a broken sconce. Correct? No, I did not see a broken sconce. What did you see? I saw a broken glass on the floor. 
shards of glass, pieces of glass, which I figured could have been a broken sconce or possibly maybe uh, the something from uh, the fire department stuff that's around the walls. So it could be something broken from that. But I real, you know, uh, maybe one of the sconces broke. I didn't see a broken sconce. I just saw the glass. Okay, was was there typically a sconce right there as you come off the elevator? Yeah, from my memory, there was sconces on on the walls, certain places. Do Do you remember looking that night and saying, "Where did this glass come from?" There's There's a broken one. Did you tie it tie it together? No, it wasn't it wasn't. Uh, it was an it was a, a assumption it had to come from some of those places because uh, what the what the glass looked like to me looked like it might have come from one of those places okay. could have been you know maybe the stunts okay when you said from the fire thing what, were you talking about the fire extinguisher no 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 there? not the fire extinguisher uh, there's a, there was a uh, in the hallway that first hallway that you go through the doors that you walk th through after you get out of the elevator those doors the fire doors that you close all right hopefully no one gets burned to death that would be uh, it's, you know crazy um but then along the wall i believe before by the staircase because there's a door that's when uh, next to penthouse five, then there's the doorway, the stairwell uh, door. And I believe there's a, a, a thing that's by the floor there that's, uh, that's got a, a glass plastic thing around it. So it could have been something from that. Your Honor, may I approach? All right, yes ma'am. Council. Do you have another copy of the deposition? Is this something for me to look at? Just wait for a question, sir. Okay. I asked you a few minutes ago whether you you were sure that it was 9.30, give or take five minutes, or if it could have been somewhere between 9.30 and 10. Do you recall me asking that question? Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to ask you to take a look um, at page 39. Do you recall giving your deposition on November 20, 2019? Oh, from down in Anaheim? Yes. Yeah, I remember that. And were you under oath That's at that first... time? Well, that's, yeah. Okay. I think that, that's, that's, I believe so, yeah. It was about two and a half years ago, wasn't it? Two, three, yeah, it's, yeah, okay. like between two and three years, yeah, sure. All right, so if you could take a look, starting on page 39. Hang on a second. <sighs> and if you go to the line 21, where were you on the evening of May 21, 2016? And your answer was, all right. So I was out in the street. I met, I was with a buddy of mine, calls me. He asked if I wanted to go out and eat. And I says, I just ate, just meet me. Let's meet at the apartment, let's go hang out. So I met him at my apartment, probably, I want to say around 9.30 or a little bit later. I don't know, yeah, between 9.30 and 10. Do you see that? So I met him at my apartment, probably I want to say around 9.30 or a little bit later. I don't know, yeah, between 9.30 and 10. Okay. And that ends up so... So does that refresh your recollection that it could have been a little bit, somewhere between 9.30 and 10? I go more with 9.30, give or take five minutes, because it could have been 9.20. Okay. It but, could have been 9.25. It could have been 9.35, but I go with 9.30. But you, Okay. And did you see any police officers? No. Okay. Did you ever hear any police officers? No. Okay. So let's go back to this 116 for a second. And you said that you saw a lot of wine at, at right outside of Wait a Penthouse. second. It's line 115? Sorry. 
Uh, the, the, the exhibit that's in front of you on the screen. Oh, oh, oh. So you go by Penthouse. Now I have to hurry up to make my promise to the, Your Honor. Um, so you see Penthouse 1 there, and you said that the wine was in that area, right? It's in front of the door. Okay. It's a little, uh, it's, 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 it's going to be a foot and a half, two feet up further north. North, closer on the way to PH3? No. It's right in front of the doorway. You have it past the doorway, the blue dot. It's, yeah, that wasn't intentional. It's just okay. in front of that doorway. There okay. we go. Okay. Can you put the dot exactly where it was? Okay. Can I move that dot? And, and how, how, much, how much wine was there? Zapato. It was a puddle. A puddle of wine. Could could you walk past it without seeing it? No. It, it was and, and could you tell a little bit about how much how much probably had been spilled of the wine? I mean, were we talking like a half a bottle, a bottle? Uh, it looked like you know a couple of glasses of of uh, of wine, uh, making a puddle. Okay wasn't like a full bottle that's, that's, you know, okay. that's a bit more. Okay, thank you. Your Honor, I do have another exhibit I need to put in, okay. and I think that might take a little bit longer than a couple of minutes. Well, so, how much time are you talking about? Well, I, I can do it as fast as I can. You can try. Okay, okay then ahead. let's, can we pick, Heather, can you pick up, well, it's going to be Plaintiff's Exhibit 548. Now, do you have a recollection of, of uh, Mr. Depp uh, having a volatile relationship with his earlier uh, partner, Vanessa Paradis? No, but then again, I wasn't, uh, I met her a couple of times. I have no, I wasn't, we weren't, our paths weren't crossing at that particular time when they were together. All right. Do you recall Mr. Depp ever referring to uh, a uh, circumstance with her as carnage? Objection, Your Honor. I'm not sure the relevance. What's the relevance? Or? Uh, we're talking. He, he's trying to give character testimony here, and I'm. Um, I'll tell you what. I'll move to a different okay. one. Okay. All right. Now you said that Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd were. Uh, um, you said that they were always nice to each other? Yeah. Do you ever remember Mr. Depp referring to Amber uh, with the term cunt? Like to a face? No, no, to you. Calling, calling her a cunt to you. Maybe in a, maybe in a text. Uh... All right. Did did he do it more than once in a oh, text? Oh, I would have I would have no recollection of that. I mean, he's called me a cunt in uh, in, in 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 a text. So I mean, it could be uh, I don't know how many uh, uh, texts. If there's something specific, if you could show me a text, that would be a different story. I don't. But I don't. You know, we've had many texts together. Many kind. You know. Okay, let's go to line 57 then, of the, it would be section 57 of the uh, exhibit that I have in front of me. Now this is a text message between you and Mr. Depp, do you see that? Well, there's 80 million texts on If you go down to 50, go to the one that's number 57. 57 from... Right. Objection, Your this Honor. is you from that? me to him. I'm sorry. May, may I approach? Okay, sure.
Are you on 57 yet? 57. Right. And, and this is to you, correct, from Mr. Depp? Is that how it's, uh, it says from to 323 That used to be my telephone number, so. That's two, correct? Oh, okay. I, see, I understand. I understand. Right. Yes, 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 all yes. Right. And, and, That's to me. All right. And, and the message he's sending to you, and this is October 18, 2016, is hopefully that Objection, Your Honor. It exhibit's not in evidence, and she's reading directly from it into the record. All right. Uh, all right. Does this refresh your recollection that Mr. Depp referred to uh, Amber Heard as a cunt? And in fact, rotting, cunt's rotting corpse is decomposing. Objection, Your Honor. I'll sustain the objection. If you could rephrase. I'll ask it. I'll ask okay. it differently. Um, do you recall Mr. Depp ever telling you that he, in base terms, uh, hoped that Amber's Rotting corpse is decomposing. Objection. In the Honor. trunk of a Honda Civic. I'll allow it. I'm not understanding the question. Say it again. Do you recall Mr. Depp ever telling you that he hoped that Amber Heard's rotting corpse is decomposing in the fucking trunk of a Honda Civic? Objection. I I'll allow it. Yeah. You can answer the question, sir. Yeah, that, well, I say, yeah, I'm seeing it here. So obviously, yeah, it was said. Okay. It was written. And then go to 59, please. And when you had to move out of, out of the penthouse to go to Sweetser, do you recall Mr. Depp telling you that, uh, this was Amber's fault and referring to her as a cunt? Can I read this yes, thing please. first so that yes, way please. I see what's going on? So now, the, what's the, I, I've just read this, and I understand. I remember. I remember this exactly because this is the period of time. You know, I'm uh, I'm moving, uh, and that this, the, he he's selling the apartments, and there's people who are coming over. I'm still living there, and it would have been better off if uh, if uh, I moved out. So that way, then the real estate people can look at it and not come in and look at the kind of paintings that I make and all that kind of crap. But my question it, so. to you is, do you recall Mr. Depp calling Amber Heard a cunt mm. and saying that sh it was her fault? Well, it's written there, so uh, yeah, I could see that. Okay. It's, it's, if, uh, well, I don't, that's not what he says. He says that cunt ruined such a fucking cool life we had for a while. I don't know. That's and he not, says, I can't even look at the building anymore, correct? Right, I can't even right. look at the building and he's anymore. selling it, right? Exactly. Okay, thank you. You're, I'd like to move the admission of those two limited. Oh, excuse me, one moment. Objection, Your Honor. There are some, uh, I mean, it's a significant exhibit. There's definitely some hearsay in there. Okay. I, I think uh, I'll reserve on that, on the entry of that, okay? And we can discuss it later time, okay? Uh, are you done? I don't know. My, my co-counsel is saying I should go with that. Can you scroll down? I'm not going to – I'm, I'm reserving on whether – so are we done with Cross? Yes. Okay. And redirect briefly? Um, We're going to be done with this witness before lunch. Uh, okay. There we go. Your Honor. Okay. Mr. Bruch, do you recall um, that Ms. Bredehoff was just asking you some questions about some text messages you received from Mr. Depp? Yeah. Uh, do you recall when those text messages were sent? No, I'd have to look at them again and look at the date. Me Could you display it to the witness again, please?
and I believe we looked at lines 59. Excuse me, 57. Do you see the date of when you received that text message? All right, hang on. month before it was the month before I moved out okay when was that text message sent it says uh, 10 18 2016 that's October that's I moved out the next month so in November so this is from uh, October so was that message sent several months after Ms. Heard made um, claims against Mr. Depp of uh, domestic violence Oh, yeah, yeah. Objection, Your Honor. I'll allow it. Yes, of course. This is after this, this whole fiasco that she started. And if we look at line 61. What am I looking at? 60. What's the date on that message? It's 1028, October. We can take that down. Mr. Bruch, uh, Ms. Bredehoff asked you a series of questions about the security video from the Eastern Columbia building that you um, observed. Do you recall that? Yeah, the PAL. Uh, when did you understand that footage was from? Objection, you already asked and answered. You said you didn't recall. I'll sustain it, asked and answered. Did you have an understanding at the time that you saw that video of when it was from? Objection, Your Honor. Same question. I'll sustain the objection. Ms. Bredehoff asked, also asked you um, a series of questions about um, the argument that you overheard between Ms. Hurd and Mr. Depp on the phone. Do you recall that? Yes. And you could hear um, Ms. Hurd's voice on that phone, right? Yeah. Do you recall if that was a FaceTime call or if it was just regular speakerphone? Just a speaker. Speakerphone. And wh what did you understand her tone to be on that call that you overheard? Objection, Your Honor. What would you understand her tone to be? So, I'll allow it if you can answer. It's fine. Taunting, egging on, almost deme uh, demeanoring, uh, the baby talk. I would, I would object, Your Honor, and move to strike. Yeah, I'll, I'll sustain the objection as to his answer, and I'll strike it. The, the whole answer, Your Honor? The, the answer, yes. I believe you testified that Mr. Depp um, hung up the phone during that conversation. Do you recall that? Yes. Did you understand that Mr. Depp was trying to end the argument by hanging up the phone? His understanding of what Mr. Depp was trying to do. All right, I'll sustain. That's the past speculation. Your Honor, he, 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 he heard the phone call and he was there to directly but observe. what Johnny Depp. So okay. Intention was. Okay. I'll sustain his reaction. I know what my intention is. Sir, sir. Oh, he, sorry. Okay, thank you. Wait for the question. Thank you, sir. What was your understanding of um, your intent with respect to uh, hanging up the phone on, on that Objection, conversation? Right. He already asked and answered when he said he hung it up. Um, and so it, it was asked and answered. I'll sustain the objection. Okay. Next question. Nothing further. Yeah. All right. Is this witness subject to recall? Possibly. Right. There's, there's a silence. Yeah. Okay, so it, it, yes or no or not for you, not from you. Yes, All right. yes, All right, sir, since you're so subject to recall, that means that you may be called again to testify at some point. So that means that until that time, the rule and witnesses still, still is in place for you. So you cannot have any outside information or talk to anybody about your testimony here today. And uh, don't look at any information about this on the news, okay? Okay. All right, thank you, sir. You're free to go at this time. Thank you. Thank you.